the IDF has begun to uncover a tunnel network on the Rafah that must have cost hundreds of millions of dollars, including smuggling tunnels that run under the border with Egypt. What will it take to cut off the sources of weapons and cash to Hamas? Meanwhile, Hezbollah seems to think it has the upper hand in its war of attrition on Israel's northern border, while Iran's influence can be seen throughout the region. Let's dive into the details. I'm Yair Pinto, and this is your Boots on the Ground report about what is happening in Israel on the 215th day of the war between Hamas, Hezbollah, and Iran. On Monday evening, the IDF launched an operation in Rafah, the southernmost city in the Gaza Strip, and it has already announced that its forces have taken control of Rafah crossing. This crossing is the main above-ground gateway between the Gaza Strip and Egypt and one of the main reasons for the strategic importance of the region. For Hamas, the Rafah area is an oxygen lifeline and for the past 20 years it has been actively running a vast industry based on smuggling weapons, people, cash and all manner of consumer goods through the tunnels running under the border with Egypt. For this reason, control of the city of Rafah is of great strategic importance for Hamas. However, as noted by CNN, the IDF moved into Rafah following a month in which neither side made any big moves, indicates that the limited operation is intended to put pressure on Hamas to accept the ceasefire outline and the release of the hostages. Of the 133 hostages still being held in the Gaza Strip, most are believed to be in Rafah, probably held in tunnels underneath the city. For these and other reasons, entering Rafah is significant in Israel's fight against the terrorist organization, but also poses some significant challenges for it. Now, let me explain a little bit more about why Rafah is so important to Hamas. As I said before, this city sites on the Philadelphia Corridor, which is the border between Egypt and the Gaza Strip. There are tunnels running underneath this border, and it is through these tunnels that the vast arsenals of weapons and ammunition that the IDF has been finding all over the Gaza Strip for the past six months was delivered. Hamas terrorists have also gone out of Gaza through these tunnels, traveling from Egypt to Lebanon and even Iran to receive training in terrorist tactics so they could be sent back to Gaza and pass on what they've learned to others. Also, it is estimated that Hamas smuggles about a billion dollars a year in cash through these tunnels as well as narcotics and consumer goods. Hundreds of millions of dollars worth of illegal black market business is conducted in this way with smuggling gangs in the Sinai Peninsula keeping most of that money. It's a big problem for Israel and it's also a big problem for Egypt, which officially denies that there are any tunnels, even as officers in the Egyptian army have been caught working with the smugglers and Hamas. With Israel now in control of the Philadelphia Corridor, some of those problems might begin to be solved. That is why there is a strong possibility that the IDF will be ordered to take control of the entire Philadelphia Corridor before moving deeper into the city of Rafah itself. This will allow the IDF to find and demolish as many tunnels as possible, which will deprive Hamas of the weapons, cash, and other things it needs to continue the fight. However, Hamas has spent many years and a lot of money building this extensive tunnel network so it's probably impossible to completely destroy it. I've said it before and I'll say it once more. The next time you hear about the poor, starving people of Gaza, remember how Hamas spent most of the money that was sent to help these people. They used it on terror tunnels and terror infrastructure. If these people are ever going to have a decent life, the terrorist organization that steals everything that gets sent to them must be eliminated. That is what the IDF is trying to do right now and it began by evacuating the civilian population from the eastern neighborhood of the city. 
The process began by sending thousands of Arabic language text messages, radio broadcasts, direct phone calls, and by dropping leaflets in order to warn the civilian population to leave the area. There is an estimated population of over 1 million civilians crowded into Rafah right now, and avoiding unnecessary harm to them is difficult but essential, both for humanitarian reasons and also in order to give Israel the international legitimacy to pursue the goals of this war. Of course, one of those goals is rescuing the Israeli hostages who were kidnapped into Gaza on October 7th and the IDF is aware that this maneuver into Rafah puts them in danger as well. This might be why the operation is so far limited in scope. However, Israeli leaders can't delay making the big decision for very long. The Hamas leadership knows how important Rafah is to their survival and hopes to rebuild their control of the entire Gaza Strip after the war ends and they're determined to do whatever it takes to keep it. This includes increasing the psychological pressure on Israel to reach a deal under the terms the organization wants even before the operation begins. That is why they announced that they were accepting a ceasefire deal as soon as they realized Israel was determined to move into Rafah. They did this in order to try and trick the world into believing they were being reasonable while Israel was determined to continue the war no matter what. But the deal that they agreed to was not the same deal that Israel proposed. It had conditions that Israel cannot agree to and Hamas knew that. So did the Egyptian and Qatari mediators who saw the plan while the Israeli negotiators hadn't seen it yet. But this is the Middle East, where lies and deceit are to be expected. This is another reason why Israel is using military pressure on Hamas in order to reach a prisoner exchange deal under conditions that will guarantee the security interests of the State of Israel. This is also being done in the hopes that by finishing off the military and political capabilities of Hamas, we can avoid more wars in the future. With this in mind, there is also a strategic value in taking physical control of the Philadelphia Corridor as this will put political pressure on Egypt to take a more firm stance against Hamas. Please continue to spread the truth, share our videos on YouTube and follow us on social media. If you can do more than that, please take a minute and click the follower button and subscribe to this YouTube channel. It really helps us reach more people and you will stay updated with what is going on in this region and can pray for the facts. Back to the news. In the last 24 hours, a barrage of 12 missiles was launched from the Rafah area towards Israeli community of Reim. The Israeli air defense units successfully intercepted five of the incoming projectiles while the rest fell in an open area. There were no casualties and the rocket launchers were quickly identified and destroyed by an Israeli airstrike under the direction of the 215th Fire Brigade. Meanwhile, another six rockets were fired from the south of the Gaza Strip into the Kerem Shalom area, causing no casualties. But this is the border crossing with Israel through which humanitarian aid enters, which came under fire earlier this week, killing four IDF soldiers and wounding several others. Several governments and NGOs are demanding that Israel reopen this crossing despite the rockets that are being fired at it. Here at TBN Israel, we will keep a close watch on this situation to keep you informed about the latest developments. If I can make a brief comment on all of this, it should be obvious to everyone that Hamas does not care at all about the civilian population of the Gaza Strip. They are merely using these people as human shields and as pawns in the games they are playing with Israel and the international community. They don't care for the civilians in Gaza. They merely use and abuse them. Once again, I will ask you to take an active role in helping us share the truth about all of this by sharing our videos on YouTube and following us on social media. If you like these videos and want to see more, please help us actively by donating to TBN Israel on the link here on YouTube or by going to www.tbnisrael.com.
tbn.org/israel. To continue my comment, I have been a journalist for many years, and now I have observed that countries sometimes behave like my little girls at home. For instance, in recent weeks, the American administration has held talks with Israel regarding a possible ground operation in Rafah, where over a million Palestinians find shelter. The administration expressed deep concerns that such an operation would result in a massive amount of civilian casualties and exacerbate the humanitarian crisis in the Gaza Strip. A senior American official said that during these talks, the U.S. asked for clarifications about Israel's plan to address the humanitarian needs of the Palestinian citizens in Rafah. Another question the U.S. side had was how the IDF would be operating in Rafah to ensure a minimum of destruction and civilian casualties. While these discussions were ongoing throughout the month of April, the administration was also reviewing all arms shipments to Israel, especially those that are likely to be used during the Rafah operation. As a result of this review and the assessment that an IDF operation in Rafah was imminent, the administration decided to suspend the shipment of certain types of weapons to Israel last week. The weapons that the administration is withholding include heavy bombs which would, if dropped on a densely populated area, cause massive and widespread damage. It seems that the US administration isn't sure it can trust Israel to not use those bombs in Rafah. We have not made a final decision on how to move forward with the delivery of this weapon. In the meantime, it is on hold. This is according to an American official. The American official noted that none of the transactions being considered concern arms shipments that are supposed to go into Israel in the immediate time frame, but only future shipments. At the same time, this official said that there are several additional arms deals with Israel that the United States Department is examining these days to decide what to do with them. This includes precision-guided kits for so-called dumb bombs and other things that will be very relevant in the coming war with Hezbollah in the north. Needless to say, Iran is not reviewing any of the weapons shipments it is sending Hezbollah. They are simply sending them as much of everything as they can, as fast as they can. With all of this in mind, I will ask you once again to support Israel and support our work here at TB and Israel in order that we can spread the truth to more people and to reach the ends of the world with what really is happening in Israel so that you back at home can join us in prayer for the peace of Jerusalem. As I think that most of you already understand, this war is way bigger than the war between Israel and Hamas between countries in the Middle East. This is a spiritual war. And spiritual wars involve all of us. So we need to unite. We need to unite in prayer. We need to stand together for the peace of Jerusalem. So please, when you pray, pray for Israel, pray for the civilians on both sides of this conflict. Pray for the IDF soldiers who are risking their lives in order to destroy this terrorist organization called Hamas. Pray for wisdom for the leaders of the countries, Israel, the United States, all the leaders involved in making these very tough decisions. The most important thing is to keep praying for the peace of Jerusalem because we know we are serving a mighty God and He will win. Hello, this is Mati here in Jerusalem with TBN Israel. This is Yair Pinto from TBN Israel here in Jerusalem. TBN Israel is keeping viewers informed with Israel-focused news, culture, and what God is doing in this land. Support TBN Israel today online at tbn.org Israel. Thank you.